Yeah, so it's the overwhelming preference of the editor of the Pentateuch to have repetitious material or doublets uh, side by side and independently of each other. Uh, that's what the editor chooses to do with our two creation stories. That's what the editor chooses to do with the uh, the two uh, covenants with Abraham. So the editor chooses to do with the uh, two stories of the acquisition of Shechem, the two stories of Jacob's return from Padam Aram, the two stories of Hagar running away from her family, the two stories of the revelation of the divine name, the two stories of the crossing the Red Sea, um, all the legal material in the latter parts of the Pentateuch. That is the the editor's overwhelming preference. Let the material sort of stand by itself independently of each other. Uh, sometimes with chapters between them, or if not, back-to-back, like -back, chapter to chapter. That's their preference. But on a handful of occasions, the editor instead adapts this other technique for editing and tightly interweaves uh, two sources together such that you're alternating between sources of every couple verses. That's what the editor chooses to do with the story of uh, Joseph being sold into slavery in Egypt. That's what the editor chooses to do with uh, many of the plagues at the beginning of Exodus. Uh, and that's also what the editor chooses to do with the uh, the two flood stories in Genesis chapters 6 through 9. And I think the reason that the editor chooses to do that for our flood stories is that if you separated the two flood stories out and allowed them to stand independently of each other, for example, you did all of P's flood story first and then all of J's flood story second, both flood stories would conclude with God saying, I promise I'll never do this again. And I, and I think that's just, that's too much. I think that probably crosses a line for the editor of the Pentateuch, they just can't imagine having God promise to not destroy the world by flood anymore and then immediately turn around and destroy the world by flood again. So <clears throat> this is what it would sort of look like. If you did all of P's flood story first, what you'd be reading is um, everybody in the world's heart is corrupted and full of violence all the time. God chooses Noah to, to, to survive. Uh, God gives Noah an elaborate set of instructions to build an ark, tells Noah to get on the ark with two pairs of animals. Uh, the heavens break open, the firmament in the sky from Genesis chapter 1 breaks open, all this water comes pouring down, there's a flood for 150 days, wipes out all life on earth. Noah parks, the boat gets off, has a covenant ceremony with God, God promises never to wipe out life on earth again. Then you turn the page to the J flood story, and now we have all these minor deities sleeping with human women, somehow producing this corrupt race of offspring, now we got to destroy all life on earth again. God tells Noah he's going to survive, tells him to get on the ark. This time he brings seven uh, pairs of clean animals, two pairs of unclean animals on the ark with him. This time the flood lasts 40 days, water bursts out of the ground. This time wipes out all life on earth. Noah parks the boat, gets out. God puts his rainbow in the sky and says, I promise I'll never do this again. <laughs> and I, I think that's just, that's too much to read them back to back. So the editor has artfully interwoven these two chapter, these two flood accounts together verse by verse. It is a bit disorientating, perhaps better than that.